For the past 25 years, no one has been able to determine the exact population of Papua New Guinea. This issue has always been controversial. We have never conducted a proper demographic analysis, so we do not have enough socioeconomic information to express statistically. Everything from health indicators to service delivery, measures of education levels, housing, marriage, birth and death rates, and even GDP per capita can only be meaningful with a reliable population figure to calculate against. And we do not have that. Every 10 years, Papua New Guinea conducts its population census, but the figure still remains a mystery. Look at this timeline of conflicting population figures from well-established organizations that we rely on for statistics. 2011, the population was estimated to be around 11 million. This figure came from an unreliable national census. Fast forward to 2021, the National Statistical Office of Papua New Guinea claims the figure was now about 11.7 million. 2022, a United Nations study funded by Australia used satellite imagery and estimated a whooping 17 million population. And just recently, in 2023, the World Bank reported a figure of over 10.3 million. My people, it seems to me that there is a gas fire competition among these organizations. Uh -huh. And this discrepancy of millions in population figures has real implications. This means that the country is currently using more or less outdated data for planning, budgeting and allocation of resources among competing needs. Take this for example, the government used the unreliable 2011 census to create seven new districts in 2022. Think about this. If PNC population was 17 million as the UN reported was said to have found, PNC would fall from being a lower middle income country to the low income category. The ratio of doctors to the population would also fall, as would the proportion of police to population. Speaking of police, did you know that licensed security guards already outnumbered police officers 4 to 1 in this country? This is also a gas fire assumption. Now, coming back to the 150 million Kina national census last year, just imagine, they recruited well over 20,000 people to conduct, including teachers who had to leave their classrooms to assist with the count nationwide with a two weeks time frame. But since the counting began on June last year, it's been plagued by delays, financial issues, and administrative challenges a classic PNG scenario. To understand why we have failed our census many times, let's understand the problems affecting data collection in this country. The 2024 census no doubt has faced the same challenges many, many years ago. Collecting data on such magnitude and scale doesn't work well in a country where 92 of its 96 districts are rural and loosely scattered in and out of challenging rugged terrains and isolated islands. Papua New Guinea's geography and remoteness is one of the main factors to this problem. In the mix, you have severe weather, weather conditions, a refusal by respondents to participate, challenges to ensure safety of staff, poor communications network coverage, and delays in funds and payments to service providers. Like I said, a classic PNC scenario. I'm not here to point fingers at individuals. Instead, I think we, we can all agree that something needs to change. We can keep using the same methods over and over and expecting different results. The challenges faced during the 2024 census are the same issues that have persisted for nearly three decades and will still be there in the next census. So what can we do? Although I've never been involved in a census exercise myself, I believe that if the foundational platform is solid and the institutional capacity is developed, the National Statistical Office could carry out this complex task more effectively with the help of our development partners, I mean Papua New Guinea's development partners. The government must go back to the drawing board and identify solutions for these recurring problems. The challenges facing our ability to conduct proper census in this country is well documented. We know the problem. We are speaking about them, but what are we doing to address them? Making plans using gas fire statistics is more like we are planning to fail. 
we need to answer that the next uh, census doesn't meet the same mysterious fate. So what do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see you in the next video.